Manchester United needs so much to get to that level that we might never know with Bruno Fernandes in a Manchester yeah. United shirt. I'll be perfectly honest, because will it happen in the next five years for Manchester United to be regularly winning Premier League titles or even getting close to it? I think, given what we're seeing at the moment, there's big question marks over whether that will happen. Champions League, for sure. Big, big question marks mm. over whether he will ever get there in a Manchester United shirt. And the leadership thing comes into it for me, because mm. when we're talking about the biggest and best players... Elite players and elite leaders, Manchester United don't have any, mm. in my opinion. And I'm a Manchester United fan. I think we've got some very, very good players and we've got some good leaders. But I think when you think about who else could have been Manchester United captain, who else could have been named it today? Uh, you think Casemiro, Casemiro got incredible experience. He has real leadership qualities. Only arrived at the club one year ago. Varane. And then you're talking about Rafael Varane, who has won everything there is to win pretty much doesn't get on the pitch enough and maybe that counts against him I've got but, two but, others here do you know I'm just, just thinking about this he's he, actually because when, when we initially started talking here I felt like we were going to say there weren't other options but now we're there actually are, exploring it there are but my, my point on it is not that there are no other options but when you look at the greatest sides in world football even if you look at now Manchester City just won mm. a treble you could name four or five yeah. who could credibly be their club captain mm. Gen yeah. and, and that's my point. I think yeah, they're when, a team built on international captains. Aren't this they? is it exactly, yeah. and and even Arsenal at the moment. Yeah. When you look at the improvements they've made, when you think about the number of players that they're adding with leadership qualities, who captain their countries or who have captain before Zinchenko, Ukraine, Erdegaard, Norway, Declan Rice, who's captain West Ham to a trophy mm. last season, added to the squad. You start to think about Manchester United squad and you wonder, look, there's a lot, like I say, there's a lot of very good players there and there are players with good experience, but there aren't leaders that jump off the page. See, I think that Bruno Fernandes is this, but I feel like we don't necessarily, we don't necessarily acknowledge that he's this because of the way he plays the game. Because he can be quite petulant on the pitch, because there have been those moments that have gone viral where perhaps the game against Liverpool where it looked like he wanted to be substituted where mm. it looked like he'd given up there was a moment where at 7-0 down a Liverpool player skipped around him and he didn't try he did give up that isn't the the qualities that you associate with a captain but I also think there are loads of examples where he has demonstrated captain's uh, a captain's mentality you know when it was all going really wrong under Ralph Rangnick when it, the toxicity and the chaos in the dressing room looked like it was going to implode he was one of the main players that was that was trying to keep the sanity. When Cristiano Ronaldo, his international teammate, was... It, well, he did effectively launch a grenade into that club just before the World Cup. Bruno Fernandes was one of the, one of the main voices trying to, trying to initiate reason with Cristiano Ronaldo and trying to keep the ship sailing and trying to, in fact, keep the ship from sinking. But you'll just agree with me. At this point in time, what we're seeing is someone who is... A, a, listen, a, a good guy who is, who knows what a leader should do. But my point is, when you look at the squad at Manchester United and we ask the question, why is Bruno Fernandes ended up being Manchester United's club captain? I think a lot of Manchester United fans will feel it is because there's a dearth of real leaders within the squad. But, but I, don't I, know I would that's expect, true. if you look back at Manchester United captains of old and you yeah. think about the squad and you think about the team, who could have been captain? What you're seeing is a player rise above four or five others who possibly could have also been named captain. And I don't think Bruno Fernandes is in that situation right now at Manchester United. But you see, at Manchester United, like the way that you're talking about Manchester United, I think is actually comparable to Chelsea. At Chelsea, there isn't a standout captain. Like there genuinely isn't one. So maybe Thiago, Thiago Silva, Silva feels the de facto captain. It's just how, but he's how much... he's a standout. Yeah, but he's, he's literally the only one. And the question then becomes, how much football can he play? He's nearly 40. Yeah. Whereas at Manchester United, I think we have to acknowledge that it's quite impressive that Bruno Fernandes has managed to rise above the challenge for the captaincy of, just to, I'm going to say them and I'm sure you can bat them away, but I would say Lissandro Martinez, Casemiro, Rafael Varane, Marcus Rashford right. are all captain material mm. and Bruno Fernandes has won that race. I won't bat them away because I think these are players of quality and experience but what I'd say is obviously Marcus Rashford's come out of the academy and for me personally he leaps out given the time that he spent at the club the other three you mentioned have walked through the door very recently two mm. of them one a bit spent one year at the club I think the other two years at the club yeah. so this is my you're underlining my point about the lack of 
leadership that has been in this squad. You know, you're yeah. talking about 25 players here. The three, three of the four that you just mentioned yeah, that's true. have just basically just arrived at mm. the club. How do you think he's going to impact on his game? Do you think that Bruno Fernandes will take on this captaincy and it will, it will make him a better player, the th- way that it inspired Wayne Rooney, say? I think he already has. Like we said, 29 Premier League games he started as captain last year. So he, he is basically, he already was Manchester mm. United's captain. I don't think there's any surprise that he's been given this today. <laughs> and Eric Ten Hag calls him an outstanding leader. Uh, you know, I think a lot of Manchester United fans will think about the 7-0. I personally think about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's last match in charge. We, we conceded four goals against Watford. And I remember the effort that the players put in on that day and it was shameful. It was a disgrace mm. for those players to be wearing a Manchester United shirt. And I remember at the end of the game when Oli Gunnar Solskjaer walked over to apologise to the travelling Manchester United fans who adore him, obviously. Mm-hmm. And some were clearly m- massively unhappy and showed Oli Gunnar Solskjaer that. And Bruno Fernandes said, no, 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 no. Don't boo the manager. And he starts pointing at himself and the other players. Yeah. And I actually thought that was more disgraceful than anything else because you had 90 minutes to show the Manchester United fans what it meant to you. Mm. And at the end of the game, you're basically saying, abuse us, not him. Is that not, is that not taking responsibility, though? Is that not something to but be what, applauded? But this is my point. I think when we think of the great leaders and the great captains, what happens during the 90 minutes is what matters most. Mm. That's when we want to see your leadership skills. That's where we want to see you take responsibility. Yeah. Not afterwards, not in and and we and Manchester United's players have had this labeled at them so often. Not in your tweets after a match, not in your post-match interview. Over the white line is when Manchester United fans expect to see that leadership, that determination, everything that got you to a club as big as Manchester United in the first place. And for whatever reason, we haven't seen enough of that. Now, I do think Bruno Fernandes has shown it more than the others. And I agree with everything that you've said in terms of why he's Mm. ultimately ended up in this position. But all I'm saying is an elite football club with an elite squad, which Manchester United currently don't have, probably wouldn't have seen Bruno Fernandes become capped. Mason Mount coming in, Andre Nana coming in. I think they're positives for Manchester United. But I wonder, are they adding the right character to their squad? Because I think this shows us they haven't quite got what they had in years gone by. Let's anyway get your reaction next. Ben, Manchester United fan. Good evening. Evening, lads. Uh, I agree with both your points tonight. Um, but I'm sort of favouring on your side in that I think he speaks very well off the pitch, Bruno. He is a logical choice of what we've got, but I don't think he's going to inspire us to any next level because he's too petulant. He doesn't. He's waving his arms around too much. He's cheating. He's diving. I don't think he's the right material for Man United captain. Ben, you know the you know the attributes that you just uh, put forward there. Everything that you said yeah. about him. He he you know he he's petulant. He's not a good loser. He's cheating. Is what you suggested. All of those all of those words off of the football pitch have very negative connotations. You don't want those in your character. On a football pitch, effectively, what you've just described is a winner. You've described somebody that will win at all costs. Isn't that exactly what you want from a Manchester United captain? No, I want someone who's not going to get marked out of big games and then run around like a crybaby. I want someone who's going to inspire <laughs> you like a Roy Keane, like a Brian Robson, like a Gary Neville. I don't want Bruno just not, not chasing, not running, not trying. Is that fair to um, march out of big games? Is that, is that a fair assessment? That doesn't resonate with my definition of Bruno Fernandes at all. I personally, I, I, he's a good player. I think we've had, this, you, you guys are talking about, is he an elite player? Would he be, yeah, he's a regular starter, but I don't think he's the best. He's the best of what we've got. But I don't think he turns up a lot in big games, but it, you, you both touched on it tonight about the lack of, Leaderships at clubs like lack of Chelsea. Look at United. Every week it's it was Harry Maguire, Luke Shaw coming out each week, going, "Oh yeah, we need to do better next week. Maybe we should try harder." And they eat, sleep, forget, and come back and do the same rubbish performance each week. And that's a lot of I think lack of leadership and lack of men in in football today. Um, Casemiro might have been a better choice, but as we've said, he, he walked through the club door. The round would have been good, but he's he's often too injured. So. Mm. He's the best of what we've got, really, I think. So I don't think he's going to inspire us to the next level because I don't think he's a great speaker off the pitch. You know, he, he speaks so well. All the stuff he said about Ronaldo, all the stuff he said about uh, other things he's done. But I don't think he's an elite leader who's going to take us to the next level. 
Ben, appreciate your call getting us started on Bruno Fernandes. Interesting views there as well. Uh, let's go to Paul next. Good evening. Oldham fan, what's your view on Bruno? Yeah, I've always said this, you know, he's, he's been great for Man United, but I've always said he's nowhere near an elite player. To me, no Real Madrid, Barcelona, Man City, anybody has ever gone knocking on the door for him. He's an, av- he's an OK player at best. And to me, as an Oldham fan looking in, I just don't think he will inspire that team to be what they should be. Man United should be top. Man United should be competing at every level. And to me, he just he doesn't. He is the biggest crybaby in the Premier League. Falls over, always moaning, throwing his hands up in the air. He's just he's just not a captain. I don't even think he's an elite player. But you know, United fans love him. Paul, you know the way that you're describing him there? Uh, like I can tell the kind of captain that you want. You want a robust midfielder, Terry Butcher, bleeding. Uh, <laughs> like that's, that's the kind of captain that you empathise with, isn't it? Do you, do you not yeah. think that there is a different way to be a captain? And Bruno Fernandes, although he goes about it in a different way, his will to win is the same as Terry Butcher. I agree, I agree. But, like I say, like, you've got... Uh, like the, you've got uh, Gundogan, who was say, a captain at say before he left. Mm. He was an elite player, led from the front. Absolutely, you never seen him rolling about on the floor, throwing his arms in the air. In the air, he led from the front, and that's probably why they won the treble last season. When the United won the treble, it was Roy Keane led from the front. I don't see Bruno as that kind of player. Can I just ask you, Paul? He was an elite player. Paul, do you see? If you were to just do a direct comparison, although they're slightly different players, if you were to have to like put your cards on the table, who's a better player, Gundogan or Bruno Fernandes? I would take Gundogan every day of the week and twice on Sunday. I think he's a better player. I think he's a more skillful player. He's a better player and he's a better leader. Hell of a midfield they're putting together at Oldham. Paul, appreciate <laughs> it. Uh, let's go to James very quickly, Manchester United fan. Uh, what's your view on what Paul had to say there? Firstly, he's saying Bruno's not a lead. But then I think the big question mark is over the leadership qualities you know, the crybaby nature of maybe what he, he is rolling around in the Premier League. Do you agree with any of that, James? No, not really. I was going to say, one thing I will state from the front is there's a lack of options. There's no, there's not that many credible options. So I agree that in days gone by, Bruno maybe wouldn't be the choice. But we've got to base it on what we are now. And Bruno's miles clear then. The big thing I think with Bruno is all this stuff being uh, pointed at him. And Rory, I'm really impressed, to be fair, with how Rory's defended him. But... On the fans hate him, and like Rory says, he, he's a he's a winner. Fair, fair enough, he doesn't lead from the front. He's maybe not leading as a midfield general, like all action Terry Butcher type. But he lead, he win, wants to win in a different way. Yeah, he uses the dark arts and cheats. But the last ten years since Fergie left, obviously there's been a drop in quality. But the biggest problem in the United, I watch United, is how passive and a team of wimps we've been. The likes of De Gea and Maguire, they're so soft and passive that actually last year was the first year in a long time with the likes of Martinez, Casemiro, even Anthony, that kind of Latin America, South American uh, fight and mentality. We've actually got a bit of ours again now in terms of McKean and Fergie, they used to surround the rest. I mean, obviously, that's not great. You don't want that. But fucking Maguire and De Gea the last few years, like, wouldn't barely appeal any decisions. We, we've, got, we've been bullied as a team, uh-huh. overrun by small teams. I kind of agree with you on that, James. I really do, because I think when Casemiro came to the club, he was such a standout in terms of his leadership that he just became an instant favourite with the fans because you could see the difference in attitude. He mm. just raised the level. And you kind of think, has Bruno Fernandes got that? No, he hasn't, but he hasn't got that physicality. But simply not being a warrior, certainly not in the, in the stature of the man, doesn't mean that he's not a warrior in his application. Like, I think he is a winner. I, I think he's as much of a winner as anyone else, Bruno Fernandes. I just think he goes about it in a different way. He's not He's not all, all blood, sweat and tears. But he is. He is a fighter. And I, I actually believe that he's a brilliant player. I really do. People seem... I seem to be overestimating him. I think most people listening to this don't seem to rate Bruno Fernandes as highly as I do. But for me, he's one of the best players in his position in the league. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.